Good morning, friends. It's lovely to be here. A bit terrifying in front of so many people who've heard this story before. What are we going to do that's going to be new? I don't know we're going to do anything that's new this morning, but I need your help. Sometimes the melody lingers on. The lyrics, the rhythm, the melody itself. Some music, however, is best forgotten, and so we do. What if you could write a piece of music that could change the world? What if you could write a piece of music that could give enjoyment to millions from generation to generation? What if you could write a piece of music that could contain a message of truth and even salvation? and that could even change lives in those who listen. Here we are on a special weekend here at Landsborough in Australia. It's a, something special on the calendar of Australia. As Mary and I were driving to church this morning, we noticed that half of Brisbane appeared to be heading north. There were more caravans and trailers and boats on the road than we normally see on a Sabbath morning. It's estimated that about 75% of Australians will be somewhere else by Christmas Day than their, than their own home. There's so much travelling, so much gathering, so many festivities, but so many who wonder about their own loneliness. There's shopping, there's baking, there's planning, there's travel, there's holidays, Tomorrow night on television, there's a Vision Australia fundraising program. The Christmas carols broadcast from the Maya Music Bowl in, tele in uh, Melbourne. There'll be loads of fun and music. Songs will be sung, old songs, new songs. There'll be people who'll sing them who have faith and some who have no faith. But they'll be singing about the baby Jesus that we've just heard about. And they'll tell part of that story. Yes, this is the time of the year when the word Jesus is often used without it being profanity. And then the questions are asked by people who don't know. Do you know the story? Who is this Jesus? Or is Jesus just Santa Claus in disguise? Today, here in this little church, we'll sing some carols. Some are hundreds of years old. Some may have little resemblance to the actual story. Hopefully the ones we sing will. Some do provide and contain eternal truths. Some tell the story of God's love. I'm actually intrigued by the longevity of some of the carols. They were all written, well, the ones we're going to sing today, well before our time and well before Glenn's time as well. Let's check out one to see if it's worth being in our hymn book and whether it has a message for the masses. Beth, you've got that red microphone. Which one will we start with today, do you think? Well, let's start with A Little Town of Bethlehem, hey? A little town of Bethlehem. Uh, we'll have it on the screen. It's on the screen already. This, um, this carol is based on a passage of scripture from Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. It was written by a local church pastor, Phillips Brooks, and the music was written by Henry Redner. And they put it together on Christmas Eve in 1868 and sang it the next next day. That was 155 years ago. O little town of Bethlehem. Beth, in, when I look through the Bible, Bethlehem is, is there about 53 times. The first is in Genesis and it goes right through the story of David. You'll remember that David was where, uh, Bethlehem was where David came from. It has prophetic mention in Micah chapter 5 and verse 2 and it's 
quoted in Matthew 2, verses 5 and 6, which I'd like to read for you. Because the men who were depicted here were coming to search for the baby Jesus. And they were following the star and they, they thought they'd come to Jerusalem. And so they went and they spoke to the governor there, Herod. And they had a conversation with him. And I want to read these verses from verse 3 to verse 6. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. Because that was, that's what these gentlemen were looking for. That's who they were looking for. And they replied, because they already knew, in Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. And they were quoting from Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. As we said, it's a historical town. It's not far from Jerusalem. You could drive it. It's probably closer than Yandina is to here. So you would drive it on the freeway in maybe 20, 25 minutes. But at that time, you had to walk or ride on four legs. If we look at the verses, and you can see verse 1 there, I'll ask you to just run the verses through for me as I, as I mention them. <clears throat> verse 1 talks about the hopes and fears will be met tonight, referring to the fulfilment of the prophecy we've just talked about. And then in verse 2, we will sing about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and some of the things that happened there. And then verse 3 it tells of God's offer of salvation and Jesus' involvement. And verse 4, there's a plea to accept salvation and a new birth. And it talks about Emmanuel. And I'm pretty sure this carol will be sung tomorrow night on that program and listened to by hundreds of thousands of people, maybe even more. So a message of the gospel is embedded in this. And Beth, why don't we sing? Um, why don't you lead, lead us? We'll go back to verse 1 there now. All right. You can rest and just be still, okay? Here we go. Children, if you can come out if you want to.
and Beth. What's what's our next one? Silent Night. I've heard it through the shops in the last few weeks. If we were to look at Silent Night, in the, in the first verse, we're looking at the virgin birth. And that was prophesied in Isaiah 7.14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin shall be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. And we used that word in the, in the last one that we, we read, we sang. But this is also quoted in the book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 23. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin shall be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Verse 2 talks about Christ the Saviour being born. And Jesus identified himself as the Christ. And so in parts of the New Testament, he's called Christ Jesus or even Jesus Christ. Hey, Steve. Good on you. You got a microphone over there? It's the blue one, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay, Steve. Uh, Can you tell us something about this song, something that you've discovered? Oh, okay, well, it was written by a priest, the words were, and the other part of the song was the music was written by Franz Gruber, I think his name was. Yes, yeah. And um, what happened was the organ wasn't working. Why wasn't the organ working? Yeah, the organ wasn't working. And they needed music for the night, so France had actually... No, it was was the... the, Minister had written the words, went to France Gruber. Yeah, he'd written them two years before. That's right, yes. And then he took the words to France Gruber. He wrote the music, but the, they couldn't play the organ. And that night, there was a midnight mass. So they grabbed the choir together and had a mass, quick, hurry practice with a guitar and a choir, and they sang it at midnight. So originally, the music was written for guitar rather than for the organ because the flood had come through and, yes. and, and damaged the, the, the organ. Yes, so... That uh, song was first played on Christmas Eve 1818. That's 205 years ago tomorrow, if we can go that way. Yes. Verse 3 talks about the Son of God, and the baby will be called the Son of God, and also about redeeming grace. And we know so much about redeeming grace from uh, not just the story of Jesus, but from uh, the book of Romans. And then verse 4 talks about the Saviour being born. We're running out of time very fast, so we're just going to sing the first and the last verse, Beth. Let's go to that. Okay, now I know there's lots of beautiful singers out here that have been in praise all year. Anyone want to come and join Annie and I? Come on up if you're brave. Preferably a soprano. Come on, come on Trace, (laughs) who I'm going to pinpoint you. Yeah, Trace. Becky, do you want to come out and sing Silent Night with us? Katerina, want to come and sing? Yeah, Tanya. Ellen. Ellen might be reserving her voice for the grand finale, I think. Is that correct? Anyone else? Yeah, Brent? Yeah, come on, Trishy. All right, this is a beautiful, beautiful song. Any kids want to come and sing Silent Night with us? You're welcome to. Blue for the blue. Tanya, are you going to come, Tanya? Come on.
In 1872, Josiah Holland uh, wrote, There's a Song in the Air. It's number 120 in our hymn book. And Carl P. Harrington didn't write the music for another 36 years, or more, further than that. And this song is 119 years old. It's titled, There's a Song in the Air. The first verse talks about the manger in Bethlehem cradling a king. And as Beth took the children through the story, there was that wonder by the people who came to visit, the shepherds, that there was something very special here. We read in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 9, about the wise men. They, they followed the star. And just a little secret, I was going to have a special slide up here which made the stars move, but I didn't get around to that. But Herod tried to find the baby Jesus, but he didn't get around to that because the wise men, when they'd been to see Jesus, went back a different route because they'd been warned. Verse 2, the baby boy is Lord of the earth and King. And Pilate had a discussion in which is based on, well, the, the, the Jews. And Jesus said 